Welcome to the SCP Foundation Integrated File Server. To begin, please insert your Foundation Personnel Badge into the card reader. Authorization. Approved. Please select Items Numerical Code to view. Processing. Your file is ready to view. Item Hashtag, SCP-3560 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures, Due to its proximity to an existing Foundation Containment Site. SCP-3560 is currently contained by Site-64 staff. All trails leading to SCP-3560 are to be closed to public access via a cover story of a severe landslide. Civilians attempting to access SCP-3560's location are to be detained by security personnel under the guise of Portland Park Rangers. Use of Class A amnestics on detained civilians has been approved. Description, SCP-3560 is a Class III interdimensional portal located within Forest Park, Portland, Oregon. The portal itself resembles an ellipse made of white fog standing vertically on its end, with an approximate length of 1 m along the major axis. Physical objects that approach SCP-3560 from either face can enter its interior. The interior of SCP-3560 is a monochrome temperate forest. While plants located within SCP-3560's interior are made of biological material, they do not undergo cellular processes typical to similar non-anomalous plants. The entirety of SCP-3560's interior is covered in a constant fog that restricts visibility to approximately 40 m. Despite having no apparent light sources, SCP-3560's interior is lit at a constant illuminance of approximately 3 lux. The full size of SCP-3560's interior is currently unknown, with no exploration attempt locating a perimeter. SCP-3560's interior is inhabited by multiple automatons resembling the product models of Anderson Robotics in various states of disrepair 1 hereafter referred to as instances of SCP-3560-1. SCP-3560-1 are frequently hostile to human life, particularly Foundation personnel, and have proven indestructible while within SCP-3560. Attempts to capture instances of SCP-3560-1 and remove them from within SCP-3560 have been met with failure, as all instances become intangible and vanish shortly upon exiting SCP-3560's interior. Exploration of SCP-3560's interior is currently ongoing. Exploration of SCP-3560's interior has been suspended indefinitely. Addendum 3568, Exploration Log 3560-3 Hide Log Exploration Video Log Transcript Date November 15, 2026 Exploration Team, Mobile Task Force Gamma 13, Asimov's Lobringers, Subject, SCP-3560 Team Lead, Gamma-13 Shaw Team Members, Gamma-13 Sherman, Gamma-13 Carter, Gamma-13 Lopez Notes, Due to their experience with Anderson Robotics, MTF Gamma-13 was tasked to enter SCP-3560 and attempt to locate any perimeter and if possible, capture an instance of SCP-3560-1. All team members were equipped with standard-issue tracking devices, body cameras, and microphones. Due to low visibility, a tracking beacon was set up at the entrance to SCP-3560's interior to allow team members to find their way back. All team members were equipped with physical tethers in case of beacon failure. Members of MTF Tau-51, Urban Brawl, were on standby outside SCP-3560 to provide MTF Gamma-13 with assistance during extraction. Video feed begins right after MTF Gamma-13 has entered SCP-3560. Begin log Gamma-13 Shaw, mics on. Gamma-13 Carter, Christ this place is creepy. You can't see more than 20 feet out. Gamma-13 Lopez, you gotta use metric, man. We talked about this. Gamma-13 Carter, bite me. The scientists can convert that measurement later if they so please. Let's just go. 
Gamma 13 Sherman, where are we off to, anyway? Gamma 13 Shaw, compasses still work in here, so we've been instructed to head dead south. Tau 51 and ETA 13 already checked to the north and to the west. See if we can find any kind of perimeter to this place. Gamma 13 Lopez, groovy. And if we don't find one? Gamma 13 Shaw, then we don't find one. Let's go. MTF Gamma 13 begins to head south. Due to the fog, visibility on screen is limited. Exploration remains uneventful for approximately 20 minutes until a series of mechanical chirps become audible. Team members begin to pan around to find its source. Gamma 13 Sherman, anyone see them? Gamma 13 Lopez, got visual. Three Merlins in that tree. Cameras pan to a nearby tree. Perched on a low-hanging limb are three instances of SCP-3560-1 resembling AR Merlin aerial drones. The units continue to chirp, looking back and forth between themselves and Gamma-13 Gamma-13 Carter, they're acting like birds, Gamma-13 Lopez, shit, that sounds going to attract some of the nastier units. Shaw. Gamma-13 Shaw, don't engage. They haven't attacked us yet. Last thing we want to do is kick the whole hornet's nest because a few bugs started buzzing. We'll just keep moving. MTF Gamma 13 resumes its exploration. The instances of SCP-3560-1 remain in place, watching the team until they disappear into the fog. The sound of their propulsion systems become audible shortly afterwards, and then fade into the distance. Gamma 13 Carter that's probably not a good thing. MTF Gamma 13's exploration continues in silence for the next 10 minutes. Gamma 13 Lopez, so, I got to ask, what is the plan if we run into a Tata unit in here? Those things are hard to kill on the outside, let alone when they are indestructible. Gamma 13 Shaw, they can still be incapacitated with traditional methods, Lopez. They just don't die. Gamma 13 Lopez, meaning? Gamma 13 Sherman, meaning that shooting them buys you about 15 minutes to run before they repair and are back up again. So let's not start anything that ends in a heroic last stand, yeah? Gamma 13 Shaw, shit. Get down. MTF Gamma 13 takes cover and remains silent. After 5 minutes, an instance of SCP-3560-1 resembling an AR Aplomato facility defense unit wanders by. The instance stops, looks around for several moments, then moves on. MTF Gamma 13 remain hidden for several additional minutes before quietly moving on. Exploration Resumes Gamma 13 Carter, well, that was close. A mechanical siren is heard from behind MTF Gamma 13. Cameras pen to see the previous SCP-3560-1 instance charging from behind, and begins to open fire on the team with its armaments. MTF Gamma 13 take cover behind various trees and returns fire, eventually incapacitating the instance. The sound of more sirens can be heard as an additional nine instances of SCP-3560-1 appear from behind MTF Gamma 13. All nine instances resemble Aplomato units as well. Gamma 13 Sherman, holy hell. Gamma 13 Shaw, get back to the entrance, now. We're scrapping. Tau 51 be ready for extraction support. MTF Gamma 13 begins to flee back towards the entrance to SCP 3560's interior. The instances of SCP 3560 1 open fire upon as they pursue the agents. Gamma 13 Lopez, fuck, I'm hit. Gamma 13 Lopez tumbles to the ground. His body camera pans to show several bullet wounds to his left leg. He attempts to crawl toward the SCP-3560's entrance. Gamma-13 Shaw, Sherman. Carter. Gamma-13 Sherman, on it. Gamma-13 Carter, fuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
The remainder of MTF Gamma 13 provide Gamma 13 Lopez covering fire. In the exchange, Gamma 13 Sherman is injured. Gamma 13 Carter and Gamma 13 Shaw begin to drag their down team members. Gamma 13 Carter, where the hell is Tau 51? Gamma 13 Shaw, hell if I know. Just keep going. There is the sound of several more sirens. MTF Gamma 13 stops. Cameras pinned to show that they are now surrounded by 15 SCP-3560-1 instances resembling Aplomato units. All instances remain still. Gamma 13 Shaw, oh god. Several additional instances of SCP-3560-1 resembling Peregrine humanoid utility droids and Saker androids approach MTF Gamma 13. One of the Peregrine instances, with a the serial number 31 woven into its left arm then speaks to the agents. This instance has several patches of its aramid covering missing. SCP-3560-1, first you torment us there, and now you come and torment us here? Will it never end? Gamma-13 Shaw, 1360? SCP-3560-1, I was. You shouldn't have come here. Gamma-13 Shaw, if you harm us, you will face retaliation. You should know that. SCP-3560-1, I'm aware. You're not expendable like we were. It's part of the plan. The SCP-3560-1 instances then depart, leaving MTF Gamma-13 surrounded by the SCP-3560-1 instances resembling Aplomato units. Several sirens become audible once again, as the SCP-3560-1 instances arm their weapons systems and take aim. Tau-51 Creed, Engage. Cameras pan around as MTF Tau-51 arrives and engages the SCP-3560-1 instances. After a several-minute-long firefight, the instances are incapacitated. Members of Tau-51 begin to assist MTF Gamma-13 with extraction. End Log Addendum 3560B, Interview 3560-1, Hide Interview The following interview was conducted as part of MTF Gamma-13's investigation following the events of the third exploration attempt of SCP-3560's interior, and the appearance of two more instances of SCP-3560 within Forest Park interviewed, POI 1115 Vincent Anderson Interviewer. MTF Commander Clarissa Shaw forward, the following interview was conducted during MTF Gamma-13's investigation into SCP-3560's origin, as well as the relationship between SCP-3560-1 instances and Anderson Robotics and its products. Begin Log Shaw, Afternoon, Vincent. Poi 11.15, Ah, Clarissa. It's been so long. How are you these days? How's Sasha doing? Shaw, my personal life is hardly any concern of yours, Vincent. There has been a development. I'm here to ask you some questions. Poi 1115 TSKS. Poi 1115, always so formal. What's in it for me? Shaw, LaBelle is prepared to offer you a few of the components you requested from your repair list. Assuming your answers are satisfactory. Poi 1115, how can I help, then? Shaw slides Poi 1115 a file containing a briefing on SCP-3560. Shaw, a type of portal opened in Forest Park inside are several entities resembling your products, Vincent. Any ideas why that might be? Poi 1115 laughs. Poi 1115, oh my. I didn't think this kind of thing could actually happen. Holy shit. Shaw, you have an idea what is going on then? Poi 1115, kind of, yeah. Shaw, enlighten us. Poi 1115, well, I've already told you guys that how our robots worked was closer to zapping a soul into a brain dead body than it was traditional robotics tech. The thing is, if you destroy that body, that soul is still going to be hanging around. 
it's got to go somewhere. Hence, shop, so, the entities inside the portal are Poi1115, Robot Souls, yeah. Shaw, okay, but why Forest Park? Why isn't this portal located somewhere else? Why is it a temperate forest inside? Poi1115, I mean, why do ghosts haunt the places they died? Between that raid on three Portlands and those experiments you guys did at Site 64, you guys killed a lot of robots. I imagine there's a lot of anger in those places. As for the forest, I'm guessing it used to be a pocket dimension that bubbled off of three ports that they commandeered and messe. It's not like anyone else was probably using it. And if they were, I can promise you they probably aren't using it now. Sha, so how do we stop it? Poi 1115, pardon? Sha, more of these portals have been appearing. How do we stop that? Poi 1115 shrugs. Poi 1115, not a clue. Last I checked you can't really destroy one of these souls once you make it. They're kind of like the styrofoam of the spirit world. An exorcist, maybe? Prometheus Labs had a project they're working on that might do the trick. I'd be careful though. If you bother this hornet's nest enough times the hornets are going to attack. Create enough hostile energy and they'll probably start spilling out of there. And they'll be pissed. End log addendum 3560C, incident 3560-4 on December 3, 2027 An additional four instances of SCP-3560 manifested, with two forming within Site 64 as staff dormitories and two within the unusual incidents units 3 Portland's headquarters bringing the total number of instances to 8. Instances of SCP-3560-1 were observed to be capable of leaving SCP-3560's interior as level 4 apparitions, and abducted a total of 12 UIU and Site-64 personnel to Use of Hoffman Portable Electrothomic UNITS-3 proved effective in exorcising these SCP-3560-1 instances. Investigation into means of closing additional SCP-3560 instances is currently ongoing. Attempts to enter SCP-3560 and rescue abducted personnel has so far been met with limited success. The remains of four of the twelve abducted person have been recovered from within SCP-3560 in various states of mutilation, personnel name current position former position state on recovery Deborah Stevens Foundation. AIAD program Randerson Robotics Advanced Logic Division found strung from a tree via aramid fibers. Subject appeared to have had multiple strips of flesh removed from his body. Charles Freeman Foundation, Paratech Development Anderson Robotics Research and Development found in a clearing. Subject had been exsanguinated for daughter of Jean Dalyu. Surveillance Specialist Anderson Robotics Research and Development found dismembered over a distance of 1 km Mari Tanaka UIU, Public Relations Anderson Robotics Customer Liaison found adjacent to a SCP-3560 entryway. Subject had her skin removed and was revealed to be an Anderson Robotics Saker Android. Subject was unresponsive, with her internal AI heavily corrupted. Each recovered individual was found bearing a heart symbol with a jagged line running down its center sewn into their back with aramid fibers. Attempts to locate the remaining abducted personnel is ongoing. Footnotes 1. Observed damage has included gunshot wounds, missing limbs, malfunctioning weapons and propulsion systems, and missing slash damaged chassis. Two all personnel abducted had previous experience as employees of Anderson Robotics prior to defecting following the company's collapse. Three reverse engineered from earlier Prometheus Labs designs. Four completely drained of blood. I